Hi, this is Paul from paulbrightby.com and this is a bit of an explanation or educational video really on support and resistance zones when day trading uh, Forex. Now we do have our currencies um, Discord group that gives live signals with our Exprat uh, algo. Um, so uh, again the Exprat algo uh, simplifies a really complicated strategy and just gives you uh, buys and sells and grades those whether it's a three star or four five or even six star in this case on New Zealand dollar US dollar now this wasn't a, a, a great looking trade it did go eventually because these signals are very very strong but one of the things that we need to look at when we're trading these uh, algorithmic signals uh, long or short are some support and resistance zones. so I want to go through this example here on New Zealand dollar, uh, US dollar, then go and look at another currency pair and go that way as well. So first of all, let me just change the, um, the watch list. Okay, so first of all, you see this is a three minute chart. So we've got a three minute signal there uh, yesterday and it went all the way down 400% profit times risk to hit another target uh, spot resistance zone. Now these support and resistance zones are not produced on a small time frame, they're produced on a 60 minute time frame. They're decision zones in which traders or algorithms have made decisions around that price. There's no, there's no such thing as a, a support resistance level. A level, a set price is not something that is reacted to instantly. It's a zone between certain prices which uh, those decisions are made. You can see here that uh, this six star sell came back up, tested the previous uh, resistance zone, came back down, tested the support zone that we've got here twice, third time it came through, and then this big zone here, we've got the contraction in the zone here, and then it pushed down through to the next zone. So how do I identify those zones? The, the best thing to do is go to the 60 minute, the hourly. Uh, this is done by eye a little bit, um, but in reality, we've got to look for pivot points on this 60 minutes. So let's take this first one, for example, here. If I just extend that left a little bit, you will see <clears throat> and, and then extend it out to the right. Okay, so Initially, we've got to take into account this pivot point here. We've got one, two, three, four, five tests at this point uh, here. So this was a good um, way to frame the, the top uh, of this particular trade. You know, this is really strong. We've attempted it here as well. If we do look further left, there may not be anything that's current or recent, but then look, we had a big rejection candle on here as well. It's a really, really prominent zone. Uh, again, when we're looking at uh, future zones, we're looking at clusters as well. Uh, you see on this next blue down where my chart is here, we had a, a pivot point here that came to test. We had another one here that bounced off. So this was a good support and resistance zone here. Got a lot of wicks in this candle as well, uh, for these candles in that zone as well. So again, it's not exact. It's a zone of price where there's going to be danger and you don't want to trade into that zone. Now, the next one is really, really critical for me. Uh, we have a big wick just here uh, where my counter is. That denotes for me the bottom of the range. The top of the range really is these bodies on these two candles here. Got a lot of wicks coming down and rejecting this zone here, but these two indecision doges, the bottom of the uh, bodies there, really denote the top of that. And then you can see here where we pulled down into this. This is a good support and resistance zone, so you need to put it on your chart. Further, we get a lot of clustering if we look left again. We can't look right, we can look left. We get a lot of clustering around here. We get a lot of wicks, bit of bit of rejection before it pushes back down again here. And then this one, we found some support. So in this particular zone where my um, cursor is now, we've got a lot of clustering in this area, a lot of rejection. So we pushed up through, we came down, found support, a lot of wiki candles and it pushed higher. We came back down again, we pushed back through, we've got a lot of wicks coming down, test, up, down, test and then gone again. 
So this is a really strong zone. Again, it's not exact, but that's where we're going. And just look at this recent move into that zone as well, and it rejected and pushed higher. And then the further one down, we've got a lot of, uh, a hell of a lot of um, clustering here. Again, look for even further left on some of these, you'll see rejections, rejections, clustering. A rejection on this lower one here, at the top of the zone here, lots of clustering here. The top of the zone denoted by this rejection doji, uh, candle there. So that's how we put those zones on. Again, it's not an exact science. Uh, you just need to see where that action is and put that zone in. And then when you go down to your three minute or smaller time frame zone, we can see the risk to reward to this for this six star was pretty poor. However, we know previously to this uh, signal. We've got lots, and we look left, we've got lots of rejections in this resistance zone here. This is very strong. So we just, our trade size, if you like, is lower. We put the stop above all of this noise here, above the danger, uh, because if it goes above there, it's just going to continue to go. We go short here, it comes back to test, it fails, comes back down. Maybe uh, at this point, you know, we just let it ride. We let it go to that uh, support zone. Once it kicks back off that support zone, you need to move your stop to break even. Okay, uh, because the thing is, if you're going to go for a low risk or reward, you need to make sure that you're risk free as soon as you can. So once it starts to approach this next support zone, which we know is held in the past, we make the trade risk free. Give it room to breathe and room to go. So it comes up, it doesn't take out the original entry, so the, the training stop is good. It has another attempt, fails, comes back up, and then pushes through. So once we've pushed through this support zone, we then need to go and get our training stop, if I can grab hold of it here now. I'll just draw another one. Once it's pushed through here and tested this one, we've got two options. We can be reasonably con conservative and put a trading stop above this pivot okay then we come back up to test this resistance here it goes back down again we can adjust the trading stop to this position okay there's no no real shakes then in this big zone we're contracting in price action here it's not really wanting to push up or down it's staying within this decision zone if you like where you know the markets will dictate where this wants to go then it pushes down and down and down so at that point once it pushes through we can go risk-free just above this zone now this is 400 percent profit times risk here when it hits this zone so at this point you've got to decide whether you're going to actually get out of this trade because this is a monster move now or you're going to trail it um, more aggressively to do that once we get to this zone for me personally i would go just above this pivot here like this it's it's got a couple of little green candles there we've moved down we're testing it's not pushing through i need to be tight and lock in a lot of profit as it happens it pushed back up through so that's just an example on new zealand dollar us dollar let's just pick <clears throat> another one so let's pick gbp us dollar we're going to go to the hourly and we're going to set this up okay we're not going to look at the signals we're just going to look at we're just going to scrunch it up a little bit uh, on the uh, on the hourly and we're going to look for support and resistance zone ones that are going to help us where we are right now so i can see here we've got some rejections at these highs and that goes with here as well so let's let's draw this zone um okay so we're going to pull in all of those wicks let's talk about where and how i've placed it so right here We've got the top of the zone. Let's just adjust that now. I've log, I've zoomed in a little bit. At the top of these two wicks and the top of this wick. The bottom of the zone, how we identify the bottom of that zone, is we want to make sure we've got all of these big wicks in here. So we just need to come a little lower now. I've zoomed in. So we've got, we're just touching on these two red wicks. So this is a zone. We've identified the top of the zone, the bottom of the zone. We look left, this works very well here as well. So this is a, <clears throat> a zone of price where decisions are made to either push through, or in this case, a lot of resistance. So that's one zone. 
and that could come into play today for example okay <clears throat> we need to see what's below this and what's also above this as well just in case we push through so let's have a look above right now what have we got we're gonna have to scrunch up a little bit okay so we've got one here actually this is not too bad it's pretty close to that original zone but we need to consider this because this could cause a lot of issues here um, we've got the top of these two pivots here but also then at the top of the zone we've got this big support okay so that's quite a fat zone but this is going to be where decisions are made so we don't want to be trading into that remember this is an hourly chart so when we go down to a three minute there's probably quite a bit of space between here and here this is if it does push up and then you know what what have we got above there i've got a big pivot peak here and on the left if i go to the top of that pivot peak and i take in those lows there so I've got the top of this pivot peak here defining the top of my zone. The bottom of my zone gets these two lows pivots where my um, my cursor is. It also then in the zone gets a rejection point at this point here. And then again we get resistance in here. So that's a good zone. <clears throat> so that's sort of frame the chart um, medium term to where we are on GBP US dollar. Let's see what's below what is going to affect this current trade just want to zoom out left again yeah I did see that <clears throat> we've got a nice pivot here look you know this is quite a way down but this is very very cru crucial as well in that we've got good resistance in this one here pulled back down resistance again we've got good support in this zone again <clears throat> so top of the zone is this pivot point here Okay, bottom of the zone really is this pivot there. So let's just, just adjust that slightly. Okay, and then we look left and we've got those resistances in there as well. So really crucial zone there. Okay, we're not overcrowding the chart. So really now we've got to look quite short term. Are any of these going to present uh, support and resistance? And you know what? I think there is one in there that we need to consider this very recent pivot here uh, aligns with this pivot so if we just go to the lows of that pivot there and we pull in there. so what we've got let's go from left to right so we got um, pivot points here where this came down to test got some rejections here resistance we've got a lot of clustering around this point we tested that as resistance and came back down and then we got a hell of a lot of clustering here comes up through comes down to test the support cluster 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 through back through up again we've got support here support here and very recent support here I'm going to take this one off now <laughs> so this is this is framed the chart if you like for uh, GBP US dollar we've got another one in here that we could look for as potential this is going to be a narrow type of affair here so we're going to look at this zone here okay for me we've got major rejections on one two three pivot points there and one here this is all resistance it could act as support in the future near-term future so now what we do is we go down to our smaller time frames and we framed the chart okay we have there so when we get our expert signals uh, the algo signals there through the discord group or on your software we are in a position to say we've got enough risk reward to go into this trade or not um, you know we uh, we look at it on the 15 minute right now okay so let's look at this example of this short here the six the six star short yesterday on the 15 minute we've got a decent risk to reward there <clears throat> it's not uh, it's not brilliant no trade is perfect but we came up to test this uh, resistance we pulled down we got a signal okay this is the signal candle here you've got to consider uh, how you're going to attack this so this is a signal candle you need to go short below the low of that signal candle here let's change that to green 
okay and now stop loss is important as well where are you going to put that stop ultimately it's got to be above the danger so your risk to reward for this trade isn't very good you're probably not going to take it unless you are more aggressive with your stops this is a signal candle you go two candles behind i'm a two candles behind type of guy if the momentum's going it will never come back and test that until you hit a support and resistance zone so even then when you look at a risk to reward and we use our fib uh, extension tool the risk reward isn't fantastic it's only one to one into the middle of that support and resistance zone. If that's okay for you, then you take it. If the risk is too much for you, you don't take it. It's as simple as that. So let's get rid of those. Okay, so uh, we look at the five minute time frame. See if there's any signals to uh, talk about there. Again, <clears throat> The five minute on that move would have been uh, the better option. You've got lots of time frames if you've got this particular indicator suite. Uh, so again, you would look at a stop above that pivot point. The five minute gets you in earlier on that move. That's the signal candle there below that zone. Okay, so we're one to one to the bottom of that zone by being ultra conservative. If we're two candles behind, we're a one to two into that zone as well. So once the momentum goes and you've just hit a, a, a resistance zone like that, you get a six, six R signal on the five. If you go two candles behind for a very, very aggressive type of uh, entry strategy and stop loss, your risk reward is one to two. If you go more conservative and you put it above this uh, pivot point, uh, you're a one to one on that uh, particular trade. Uh, we move we move forward in time there was no other trades okay there was a uh, a little longs there so let's have a look at those um let's delete all of this lot here again this is me just going through seeing what i see and do, doing some so we've bounced off here okay we've got a five star and then we've got a six star okay i like to purely just trade the six star so once you get a six star signal candle you don't get a move up above there. Your entry is above that six star entry, so there's no trade. For me, I'm just, I purely just like the six star. Uh, we come back down and test, we get a five star short. Again, for me, I'm a, I only trade the six star. So this is just, uh, I know I've waffled on a little bit, but it's really, really important when you're using the XBRAT algo to frame your charts. Go to the 60 minute and look at those recent. Now, for me, I never get rid of these. Uh, as price action goes beyond these, I'll just extend them right because they've been a decision point in the past. Now, if those decision points change in the future and I have to adjust them, then I will do. But right now, I know these are decision zones, if you like, where during that uh, zone of price uh, from a high and a low and within that zone, uh, decisions are made by algos and traders to either see it as support and bounce off or try and push through eventually uh, and uh, or, or it acts as resistance so these are very prominent zones and to be honest this is all you need keep your charts clean the expert algo does all the work it looks at the macd it looks at the stochastic it looks at ellie wave it looks at volume it looks at everything else and the my brain has been put into this expert algo where i would take those particular trades okay so it's it, it works it all out for you all you need to do is be confident where the support and resistance zones are and frame your chart if you're trading 10 currency pairs for example every single chart that you're trading every single currency pair you need to frame your chart for me uh, i trade uh, the metals i trade some of the uh, currency futures but i always have those uh, on uh, there so if i go to um platinum for example they're already on there if i go to the hourly all my zones are on there and they're really really sticky zones the way i've just taught you to do that these are really sticky zones so if i come back here uh, we look at um we look at uh, platinum on the 15 minute you know these are really really i mean this was a trade on the, on a lower time frame um yesterday that was a really great move so but some of these are pretty good as well 
we look at coming back through resistance six star short into there finds that support uh, support comes back up and tests again so this at the moment for me is just short term it's in grey if it tests that sort of price zone again in the future in the near future I will extend that out and that will become more of a permanent zone so everything I do everything I trade it's already there the, the chart is framed with those support and resistance zones and that's all you need when you're trading the XBRAT algo. Uh, 